We've been talking to Eunice for about three years now on this, and obviously she's a fantastic reporter, but for me, the best reporting is just her own daily life. Right. And to hear you're taken away. I mean, and we see these, you know, COVID outfitted, effectively cops walking through the streets, marching, if you will. What are we learning about, not China, because the people and the government are different. What are we learning about the Xi regime? So, uh, Brian, uh, the, uh, I heard a new term this week, which is you know, you've got to decide between freedom and sheedom. And, and what is sheedom? It is basically a doubling down on uh, repression. It's the return of the ideological man. He really does believe in Marxist Leninism, Marxism, Leninism. This is uh, uh, the most power in a single individual uh, in a very long period of time. What's dangerous for him in these protests is that they they seem to be spontaneous. They seem to be uh, countrywide. Uh, they uh, it's not just about COVID. COVID certainly is what set this off, but it's uh, the danger of the breaking of the social contract between the Communist Party party and its billion plus people, which was essentially. You know, you're not going to be as free in the Western sense, but we're going to take care of you and, and, and uh, economically and otherwise. And people are seeing economic growth slowing. Uh, they're seeing individual freedoms being ratcheted back. They've got more doubts about their future and whether uh, they're going to have a secure future. Uh, and so the social contract, that's the biggest danger for him, is if people in China see the social contract as, as breaking down. If you read, and I urge all of our viewers and listeners to read a little bit about Xi's childhood, about his background. Initially privileged, his father was denounced by the Communist Party. He was taken away, I believe. Xi and his mother were forced to retreat. They were paraded through the town. They were basically humiliated publicly. He was effectively sent not to a work camp, but not far off. In other words, it was a pretty brutal adolescenthood for Xi. But he also learned the power of the government. The government had full control over his family. Denounced his father, banished his, him and his mother away to a rural village, lived in a cave, literally at one point. You just wonder what the humanity is there. Or if I, there so, is that, given yeah. what we're seeing, with the, not only with COVID, Uyghurs, Muslim work, work camps, by the way, making all of our solar panels, yeah, I mean, don't forget that a lot of these protests were uh, triggered by a fire in uh, uh, the Uyghur part of the country where people died because it's believed uh, uh, the COVID lockdown made it uh, harder to rescue people. Whether or not that's true, that's certainly what the broad belief is. I'm really glad you gave uh, some of Xi Jinping's history because I think it colors everything he's doing. He's a true believer. He's seen uh, uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union. It's one of the things that, uh, that, that motivates him the most, that when you let go of power, when you loosen up power, you could lose everything altogether. He now has to make a decision. Uh, does he crack down or does he uh, reach some compromise on COVID and other issues or does he do a little bit of both? Uh, the party is 90 million strong in a country that's well over a billion, as you know. And so the only way they stay in power is uh, is by carrots and sticks, the carrots of giving people a better economy, which they're not yeah. doing right now. And then the stick of the surveillance state where they can watch people and they can rein people in. And so I think th this is really going to be interesting. I, I My guess is he's going to use some of both. I, I, I don't see. Listen, I, I can't see she. Maybe I'm wrong. What do I know? I can't see she because I don't see really many politicians anywhere in the world say, gee, guess what? Remember that whole strategy we had? Turned out it didn't work. We were wrong. We apologize. By the way, first politician who says that about anything, whatever the topic, has my vote pretty much automatically. She's going to dig in, Fred. He's not going to flip now and suddenly be like, yeah, remember how we locked you up for three years? Yeah, sorry about that. But, but if he digs in, then the economy goes further south. I don't think he cares, uh, does he? They print their own money. They don't care about debt levels. Well, but, uh, you know, if, if, if they're at whatever point of growth they are now, 3.5%, et cetera, and if their growth is under 6 7% going forward, they could have more discontent. So he, he, he's got to find ways to still 
uh, get some domestic growth out of this. And so cracking down entirely could be against his interests, and it has been thus far. There's less investment coming into the country. Uh, the crackdown on the technology companies has hurt uh, their ability and, and, and their strength. Um, you know, and so he right now, I think he's more interested in party control than he is in growth. But can he have both? Uh, can he have slow growth and continued party control? I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, he kind of he got back in the Communist Party, according to The New York Times, some others by being kind of a super communist. I mean, just super adhering to every facet of their belief system. That's the only way he got out of that rural village and sort of back in charge. And now he's probably going to be president for life. Fred Kemp of the Atlantic Council. Uh, we appreciate your views. Thank you very much.